Hello everyone in CSC 121, Graphical Python Programming. We're in week 10, finishing up Module 5. The exam for Module 5 will be available this week. And you have an additional program to write that um, is a uh, printing program. So to give you uh, to give you a, a little head uh, head start on uh, printing, I'm gonna run through a little printing demo. I have to tell you that having used printing in lots of other languages, I think that PYQT5 probably does the best job of printing of any language that I have used. Um, if you work with .NET, Microsoft.NET, and you have tried to do any printing at all, I think you will uh, you know, think this is way, way easier in, in PYQT5. Printing is a bear from uh, most uh, of the .NETs and Visual Basic stuff. Uh, there is, uh, there is uh, some, or there are some reporting tools that a lot of folks use to print just because it's so much trouble uh, in the Microsoft languages to to do a decent printout. So uh, I've even seen people that will fire up a word automation uh, behind the scenes, send what they want to print to Word, and then have Word do the printing in Microsoft uh, just because it's so difficult to do. So um, <clears throat> to get started, with printing in uh, PYQT5. There are two main dialogues that we use with that. One is the QPrint dialog, and the other one is what I use most of the time in the real world, and that is the QPrint preview dialog. I don't know of very many people that will print something without looking at the print preview first, but if you like to waste paper, then by all means go with the QPrint dialog. In pretty much every instance that I can think of, unless I was printing a receipt out of some program, you know, printing some sort of coupon or receipt or something, then I might go direct to the printer. But if it's something that someone has been working with and there's a chance that it may not be what they want the first time, then most of the time I will put them into the print preview dialog and then when they're happy with the way it looks, they can go ahead and print from within inside the print preview dialog. But we'll do both just so you can see how to implement both in the program. So uh, let's go ahead and create this user interface here. I've already downloaded the, the GUI template. Uh, so um, I've got a, a UI file out there that I can open up. So uh, open that up, QT5 Designer. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger because this has a lot of stuff on it. So uh, first thing that we need to create uh, is a list widget for programming courses. Um, and I'll go ahead and put a label on here first at the top and uh, just change the the text on that label to be um, programming courses. And we can go ahead and make it bold. And I'll go ahead and set the font to be something 
Uh, nice, like, aerial. And then make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so I've got my label there. And now I need my list widget. Um, and we can call it list widget courses. So uh, we'll find our list uh, widget right here. List widget. Q list widget. Make sure you don't get the one that's uh, model based. When we're talking about model based widgets, they're uh, they're mainly designed for database models, which we actually get into SQL databases in the next class, but our next next week. I'm sorry, but uh, we'll go ahead and put our programming courses out here, and so. Um, the programming courses that are offered here, uh, you know, so I right clicked on the list widget and I'm just going to type them in here one at a time. Uh, CIS 115 Programming and Logic. Okay. Add another one, CSC 134. C++ programming. I'm teaching that at the North Campus right now. Or actually, it was at the North Campus. Uh, now that uh, we have um, the virus going on, um, I guess it's uh, online for the moment. CSC 121, your class that we're in right now okay and what else do we have oh, we've got CSC 139 Visual Basic anything else uh, CSC 151 Java. I don't want to hear any UG. And then the advanced, uh, or no, C sharp programming, sorry. CSC 153. C sharp programming. Okay, so there's all of our uh, programming courses there in our list widget. So next, let's put a text edit, a text edit on our uh, dialog here. Text edit is one of my favorite widgets of all. It actually lets you do bold and all those other things because it actually saves its text as HTML. So anything that you could do in HTML, you can do in a text edit. So very cool uh, widget. Uh, that can have all kinds of formatting and things going on. So, um, gonna right click on that. While we could, we could actually just double click, and that's why instead of double click, and I'll just do that. You notice I have two tabs, and it shows you the HTML, and it shows you the rich text. And to save typing everything in here, I think I've already got it. I copied and pasted it out of the uh, out of the uh, exam guide that we had for what exams mapped, what certification exams matched mapped to our various certificates. So I'm just going to copy that and paste it straight in here to save having to type all that stuff. Okay. And it looks like I may need to make my dialog a little bit bigger. Let's see here. 
how this is all going to work out. Got a lot of courses there, huh? There we go. All right, we need a label to kind of tell what these are. So uh, we've got our uh, diplomas or certificates, and we've got our uh, certification exams here mapped to them. Okay, I'll throw another label on here, right about there. This is going to say certificates and certification test. So uh, text certificates and associated certification exams and as long as we're here we might as well bold this and set it to a font family that uh, that everybody's got. So, well, go to Arial again. And we can, we've already made it bold, I thought, maybe not. There, let's make it bold. That's looking pretty good. Okay, so um, let's throw our buttons on here. And let me go ahead and save this the right way. Um, save this as printing demo.ui. Okay, let's get these last buttons on here and then we can go write some Python code. So, uh, buttons, push buttons. Okay. First one will be just a print, so we'll call this push button print is as good as any. I triple clicked in there, as you recall. Make sure you triple click and make sure that you hit enter so that it saves your change. Otherwise, you could be in for a difficult time. So there's my print button. And then we need one for print preview. So another one. And this will be triple click, push button, uh, preview, enter. Okay, change the text on that one to be preview, print preview. How's that? Click the three dots and we can do multi-line. Okay, and then uh, print preview for the list. And we'll talk about why we have two different buttons here in a second. Okay, this one is push button uh, preview list. I didn't triple click. Let's try that again. Push button preview list enter. Text is going to be text is going to be print preview list print preview list looks like it uh, has taken up a lot of space one more button and we're done uh, we need one to print a PDF and this is uh, again Printing and making PDFs in 
QT5 is just great. Uh, it is so much easier than anything else that I have used. Push button uh, PDF. Whoops. Triple click PDF. Enter. And this is going to be print PDF. Okay, so remember this is a list widget. This is a text edit. Text edits are so, so much easier to print from. It's like two lines of code to print this. This is a nightmare uh, to print a list widget. Uh, basically, the best way I have come up with to print a list widget is to simply uh, almost do what we call a screenshot to actually steal the PD, not the PDF, but steal the QPix map that's being rendered for this and send that to the printer. A, 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 it may be a better approach uh, if you ever have to do this in real life and it's a list widget or something um, you could explore using a loop to wind out every item in the list widget and create yourself a text edit that wasn't visible and populate everything in the text edit and then it would be one one line of code to print the text edit versus all the stuff to print the the to steal the QPix map out of here and make that work but uh, anyways so we've already uh, renamed this and it's saved and so now if I go out here and look I've got a printing demo dot UI so let's get cracking with the uh, with making the uh, uh, Python program. So I'll leave this minimized and I can get rid of my save there now. And let's start up Tawny. And there's some C++ that we can get rid of. Okay, here's our GUI template. I'm gonna open that with Tawny. And this is going to be printing demo. Oops. Printing demo. Uh, it is 2020. And it's 329. And we'll change that too. Okay. So first thing right here where we've got this needs to be printing demo. And we can save this as. And we get into the right folder here. Printing dialogue lecture. That's good. Okay, this is going to be printing demo.py. I don't think your textbook talks about printing at all, but it's such a valuable uh, skill to have. I can't imagine uh, knowing a language without knowing how to do decent printing from it. Hence uh, what we're doing. So, uh, first off, let's get our uh, buttons our buttons mapped to uh, connected so we'll connect the signals to some slots that we will write here so first one is self dot dot ui dot push button and what did we call that first push button That first push button right here is push button print. So push button print dot clicked dot connect and we'll connect that to self dot print method. 
That'll be short and sweet. Okay. Uh, next one is uh, push button print preview. Self.ui. I can't have a blank there. Okay. self dot print preview method okay next one is gonna be uh, print preview list I think I'll do this copy that save myself some typing here okay print preview list method Okay, and the last one is going to be print PDF. So let's see. Push button preview list. Okay, now let's connect the last one. Fix my indention there. Okay, this is going to be uh, push button PDF clicked and the method is going to be self dot print PDF method. Okay. So we've saved those and run it. Let's just make sure that everything works. And it says my form has, no, oh, yeah, we haven't created those yet. So let's go. Uh, we've set these methods up, but we uh, didn't actually write the methods. So it's blowing. So def dot print method. Remember, it has to get an instance of self passed to it. Okay, we'll dummy these up to begin with, and then we can go back and fix them. The next one after that was print preview method. Okay, and we'll pass in there. Remember, we can take the pass out after we've done... What's the next one? Print preview list method. That's close enough to this that I think I'll copy it and come down and just paste it and get rid of that. Preview list. Is that right? Yeah. And the last one is print PDF method. So we'll do one more. Print PDF method. So now we've got these, these methods exist. So if we save it, it should go ahead and run now and it does remember the only button that's connected right now to, or that actually has any logic behind it is the exit button so all that is connected now I always like to check that out ahead of time so let's do the easy one first now before we get into this we've got some imports that we need to add at the top to use these dialogues and there's a lot okay there's a lot so in addition to Q dialogue and Q application we're gonna have Q file dialogue we had a lecture on that already we need this to make our print preview work excuse me, not print preview, to make our print PDF work, okay? Because you have to know a file name in order to save a PDF. So here's the line that has a lot of stuff in it. 
from PYQT5. And this is going to be dot Q print support, QT print support. Okay. Uh, import Q print dialog is our print dialog. There's a Q print preview dialog. And there's a Q printer object. You could probably guess what some of these are. Okay. Uh, we also need the file info object for our PDF stuff. PYQT5 dot QT import Q file info. Okay. And one last thing. We talked about that if we were going to print a list and we wanted to steal the uh, the pics map, then we would actually need to uh, have something to be able to, to paint that pics map. So we're going to need a Q painter from the GUI object, uh, from the GUI, QT GUI namespace. Q painter. Okay. That's all of the imports. So we added this. We added this. We added all the print support stuff here. And we added this file dialog. And I'm going to save that and run it just to make sure that, yeah, it didn't blow. So it was able to find all of our imports. Okay, so now that we've got that, let's do the easy one. Let's just do a print method. Now, uh, this, anytime we hit that print button, no questions are going to be asked. It's not going to ask us if you are sure or anything. It's just going to print something right away. This is going to create our QPrint dialog. If dialog.exec underscore. This is saying if we ran it and they accepted the, uh, if they click the accept button. Okay. Q dialog.accepted. Okay. So we got an if statement that if they click the button, if they didn't cancel, in other words, then uh, this is where we're actually going to send our printout. So this is how easy it is to print that text edit. Self.ui. Let's make sure we know what the name of our text edit was again here. It should be, oh, we need to name that correctly. We only have one. We could leave it text edit, but how about we call it certs? I hit enter on that and I'm going to save it again. So it's text edit certs. Okay. So down here, self.ui.text edit certs dot document. This contains everything that is in there, all that HTML for those certificates. We're going to call the print method for that and we're going to send it to the printer that they picked in this print dialog right here. Okay, so this is getting whatever printer they picked when our print dialog popped up. Okay, so at this point, we've got, we're getting the text edit certs document. It has its own print method that we can call. And the only thing that this print method right here wants is it wants a valid printer. 
and we're going to get that from whatever they picked here in the print dialog. So let's uh, let's go ahead and run this, and I'm going to click on print. Okay, and let's see. Exit. Okay. Uh, didn't get exactly what I wanted there. Uh, let's see. I've got Q print method. I've uh, got print method here. It's connected to the push button print. Okay. Here is showing the the dialog right here. Uh, dialog dot accepted. I didn't see a dialog actually show when I ran this, so that's what is confusing me right here. Oh, I see what I did. I typoed this right here. Dialog equals. Okay. All right. So this is I, I didn't see that dot there. So. Okay, this is creating some a variable called dialog, and it's gonna uh, it's creating an instance of our Q print dialog class, and then here's where I'm calling the exact method of it. So let's try this again. Okay, there's our now this is gonna look different on Windows, but this lets me pick my printer here. And you can see on Linux, I actually have a print to PDF. Uh, but uh, you could print, pick whatever printer you wanted. And you see, if I click the print right here, then it would go ahead and print that. If I click cancel, then I get out of it because of this line right here. It's only going to actually send that to the printer if I had clicked the uh, the print button, which would mean that I had accepted the dialog. So, how many lines of code did it take to print that text edit right here that had all our certs in it? It really takes basically about three lines of code right there. If you don't count the, uh, the import that we had to do up here to get that stuff. Okay? So, um, all right, so let's go on here and let's do a print preview dialog. Now, the print preview is not much longer than that. Uh, it's actually still not, not very long. I'm going to steal this line right here, and I'm going to paste it right there and get my indents fixed, okay? And this time... My dialog is going to be Q print preview dialog. Okay. And we should have imported that up here, did we? Right there? Yep. Okay, so once we've got the the get rid of that. Okay, once we've got that, then our logic here is is almost the same. Uh, it's a little, little bit different, but uh, we'll go ahead and connect it so you can see. Uh, so right here, we don't have to worry about if they clicked accept or not because the print preview dialog handles that for us. So dialog dot paint requested okay dot connect we're going to connect that to this method right here text edit dot certs Text edit dot certs dot print underscore. Okay. So that's connected there. 
and then we'll execute that dialog. And it's got an underscore after it. Whoops, underscore. Okay. So that's what that particular dialog looks like. And save this and run it. So this is a print preview. Rather than firing up the printer right away, we'll, we'll show the preview. And let's see. I, I don't have something quite right with that. Let's see. Dialog equals Q print preview dialog. I didn't call the... I left off these so it didn't actually call it. Let's try that again. There we go. There's a print preview. And, of course, the person using it can change the uh, zoom level and everything. So this is a print preview dialog. And if I wanted to actually print it, you see my button here. So this kind of gives them a preview. Now, obviously, if you're writing a cash register program or something that somebody's using at point of sale, then you wouldn't want to fire up a print preview and make them go through that extra step every time uh, you'd want to just fire it off to the printer but in this case um, you know for what we're doing here just a demo uh, print preview then you can see that that works and if I hit print then it actually still lets me pick what printer I wanted and everything okay so we've handled this We've handled this. We've got uh, the hard stuff now. This does not have a list widget, does not have a print method that we can connect to. You see right here where I was connecting to that. A list widget does not have that. And that makes our life a little bit harder because we've got a basically steal uh, we've got to steal the um, uh, the the picks map from that and so that's a little bit more uh, work okay so we are gonna have to write two additional methods here in order to make this work okay the first one is handle paint request And we'll take two parameters in, handle, paint, request, self, and printer. Okay. And next we need to set the resolution. Now, this, most laser printers are at least a thousand dots per inch. You may have one that's more than that, but I'm going with a low number here just so that it would work on pretty much whatever somebody wanted to try. Most of your laser printers are at least a thousand dots per inch. Okay. I'm going to create a painter object if I can type here. Painter equals Q painter. This is what's going to let me steal that uh, uh, or print that picks map okay and then I've got to begin the painter and you send it to the printer and then here I've got to uh, take a get a picks map of the list widget so this is how I'm getting steal that picks map screen picks map is what I'll call that variable equals self dot UI dot list widget courses dot grab okay so 
that steals the picks map. The grab method of a widget lets you steal the picks map, the actual image that's being shown. Okay. And then we're going to have to scale it to fit because it's it's actually right now when we ran this program that that uh, list widget did not fill the whole screen so if you want it to scale to the width of your printer then you'll need to do what I'm doing next uh, screen picks map dot excuse me screen picks map equals screen picks map dot scaled to width it would be really really small if you left this step out Int we're gonna get the current width getting the current pick width of our picks map and we're going to scale that up by 8,000 and I'll explain why okay let's see if our parentheses are matching up this one's blue that one's blue this one is blue for the int. This one is blue for that. Okay, so um, the reason that I'm multiplying it by 8,000 here is because uh, we know that our printer is a thousand dots per inch. How wide is a normal sheet of paper? Eight. What's eight times? Uh, what's eight times one thousand? Eight thousand. That's where I decided to scale this up to make it uh, big enough to be the width of a sheet of paper. Okay. So uh, next we'll draw it. Painter dot draw picks map this is actually I'm telling it to start at 1010 10, X and Y of 1010 10. okay and then painter dot in okay so this all this code that we just did is to steal that picks map for that list widget and paint it to the printer. So this handles getting it and sending it to whatever printer we pass to it. Now we haven't linked this to anything. This right now is not connected it's not connected to any buttons so our next method we're gonna have to connect this up print okay sorry okay we have this method that's called print preview list this is where we're gonna hook this stuff up okay so Again, we'll call our print preview dialog. I could just steal that line right there and paste it in. Okay. So that's our print preview dialog. And then when, when that thing, it, when that dialog decides to be printed by somebody clicking it, dialog.paint requested dot connect this is where we're gonna connect to this so we're gonna connect that to self dot handle paint request and now we're gonna need to uh, now that that's 
that's connected. When this thing is actually called, the printer that's picked is going to get sent to it. Okay. So, the last thing that we need to do in here is we need to actually execute our dialog. We need to call that. Okay. So, if we've done this right, and of course there's a lot of code there, we could have messed something up. But if we have done this right, then we should, when we click our print preview button for the list, we should get a print preview and it should have the PIX map of our list widget. And remember our list widget had courses in it. So let's run this. So here's our list widget up at the top that says programming courses. And so when I click print preview list, we're going to steal this image right here. And we're going to paint it to the printer. And it looks like something may not have gone exactly to plan. Let's scroll up to the top and see. I don't see anything there. So we'll have to go back and look at our code a little bit and see where we messed up. Okay. It's so not throwing an error. That's a that's always the uh the part that uh makes it harder is when it's not throwing an error. So I don't think I let's see. Here's my handle paint request. Okay. So I set the resolution here. Printer dot set resolution to 1000. I created a painter object there. I began the painter object. I captured a screen pix map for self dot UI dot list widget courses dot grab. Okay, I scaled to width. Okay, screen picks map dot width. Oh, I left, yeah, I got an int in there. Converting that all to an int. Okay. I think it has to do with my scaling here, and I've just got to figure out what I did wrong. So, times 8,000. So, that's times 8,000. Divided by screen picks map width. And then 3. Okay. And then I drew it right here ten ten screen picks map and I see where I messed up right here I didn't call the end method I left off my parentheses okay so call that method you have to have parentheses on the end to actually make something run trying to get this to work and when i run it and click the print preview list you see we're not getting anything uh, and the error is that i don't have this named correctly we are trying to capture this screen picks map for list widget courses and when I check my uh, QT designer you can see that it's not named list widget courses it's just named list widget so I'm gonna triple click in there and change that to courses and hit enter 
and save my Qt designer file and go back to Tawny. And now you see I have list widget courses there in 8000. And let's run this again and click print preview. And here's what we have now. As you can see, we're properly capturing the uh, PIX map of the uh, list widget courses. So at this point, we've got one, one thing left to write here, and that's the uh, code to print a PDF. And so uh, let's go ahead and finish this out writing the the print PDF method and in order to do that we will need to use the file dialog and so the file dialog uh, as you recall returns a tuple so the tuple consists of the file name and the button that was pressed and we can capture both of those items like so. File dialog. Okay. Uh, get save file name is the method that we're going to call. Okay. And we can use some name parameters in here to make this easier to read. Uh, if you're wondering what these things that are getting passed are, the parent is uh, self. That's the first one. The caption, which is the uh, title at the top, the caption, uh, that will be export PDF. Okay. And the directory, if we want it to search in a directory, we could specify it here. I'm going to put none and a comma. And if you want to wrap in, in Python, as you know, you can put a backslash in here. And so the backslash lets us wrap and filter equals and this is our filter we have done filters in the past um, if we want PDF files we can do that star dot PDF two semicolons and then we'll give ourselves an all files as well and that would be star dot star Okay, so there's our filter expression. Uh, and it needs to be quoted. And I think that's it for that. Okay, so we've got, let me make sure these match up. Filter. Uh, PDF files. PDF files. And let's see. That looks better. Uh, PDF files and that you know, that's all of our filter there and then this closes our okay so we've got that now let's uh, go ahead and write some code here to handle this uh, if file name is not equal to an empty string Okay, if q file info, this is our file info class that we imported up there at the top. 
and we're wanting to make sure that uh, the file name suffix, uh, if it doesn't have anything, then we want to put a PDF on it so that it's always saving as a PDF. So if Q file info uh, file name, okay, if that. dot suffix is equal to nothing saying it doesn't have a suffix basically then file name plus equals put the PDF on the end of it okay so we've got the the file name handled now printer equals q printer set the high resolution high resolution set the output Let's see. Set the output format to qprinter.pdf format. Set the output file name. Okay, got all that set. Now, what was this last print PDF method supposed to print? Print PDF. And I don't know that we really uh, had uh, in mind what that was going to print, but we'll have it print the list widget up here to a PDF. So that means we'll have uh, some of this code that we were doing before that we had hooked here, okay, with the set the resolution and every creating the Q Painter. How about we do it right here? Q Painter. So this code we know works. So we can paste that code down here and we'll need to fix the indents on it okay so we've got that uh, let's see if we need all of this uh, we've got the uh, the Q Painter object. We're beginning the printer. We're capturing the list widget courses Pix map. We're setting the Pix map again. We're drawing it and we're ending the painter. And that looks like that's all that we need. I just copied that code basically from where we did it earlier. So uh, that that looks right. Let's try it and see what happens. Okay, so here's our list widget. We've tested out the first three buttons. Let's test the print PDF. So you notice our filter is working here. We have PDF files in all files, okay? So if we want to go ahead and create one right here, we can do that. Uh, let's just say uh, test print of list widget dot PDF. Now our code would have put the PDF on it if it didn't have it. So I'm going to save it. And then let's go look in that folder and see if it's out there uh, that was on my 
flash drive and it was in the 2020 spring and module 5 and printing dialog lecture and looky there we've got a PDF and look what's inside the PDF so that's the end of the printing demo we did a lot of different things we printed uh, we printed uh, just uh, with the normal printer we did a print preview dialog we did a print preview of the list widget here where we had to capture the PIX map. If we're ju just using a text edit, it's a lot easier. It's just three lines of code. And then here we did a print PDF where we used the uh, file dialog to get the save file name. And then we wrote out a PDF. And so that's the end of this uh, file, uh, excuse me, print dialog demonstration.